This is uh, shallow well water coming from 14 feet below the surface and uh, it actually runs surprisingly clear but it is definitely not a bad idea to put some filtration on. You know anytime I hook up a new well or switch tanks or screw around with anything it kicks up some silt, it kicks up some sand and sometimes if the uh, you know power is out and the, and the bladders in the well tanks collapse it'll stir up some crap so you want to have some filtration on the water even if it is nice and clear once it's all settled out and uh, so the first filter I have is a 250 mesh or 60 micron spin down filter and basically it just uses a uh, centrifugal force to try to sling the heaviest particles down towards the bottom of the container and then once you get a little bit of a build up you just open up this valve and you can either drain it into a, a drain line or you can just blast it into a bucket real quick and also it kind of it runs water across here and it kind of flushes off the surface of that um, plastic film this one is a uh, you can get these for thirty five dollars at Lowe's this one I think I ordered on Amazon um, because I wanted one that had the three quarter inch female so I could use shark bite fittings and the reason I wanted to use shark bite fittings was to make it first of all real easy to install and real easy to service and replace if necessary but it also gives you the ability to move it around move your filters around which you may or may not need and after every filter I put a pressure gauge so you can you know monitor basically look at your pressure before and pressure after the filter while it, while someone has a faucet open somewhere and you can see your pressure drop uh, this thing comes apart basically you can unscrew this and you can take that filter element right out of there just wash it in the sink but although I haven't seen any pressure drop whatsoever and also I have never really had very much stuff build up in here but for it, it catches the big particles catches sand and at 60 microns uh, it's it avoids having to do a lot of filter changes so that I can go my right next I want my right my next filter is a 5 micron so I can jump right to that um, skipping the sort of 50 to 20 micron filter and uh, so I go into a 5 it's just a polyester filter um, catches a lot of the silt that gets through the 60 micron so it's going to turn colors pretty quick this one's probably been in there for about a week or so and uh, after that there's a carbon block filter and the reason for that is because this is a again surface water it's shallow water um, it's directly recharged by surface runoff rainwater road salt is in there you can have pesticides you can have um, contamination from neighboring septic uh, drain fields so a carbon filter is probably not a bad idea and allows you to filter out stuff like pesticides herbicides smells, tastes, things like that. I don't really smell or taste anything in this water, but considering the fact of how close to the road I am, this seemed like a good idea. I wouldn't even want to really shower in this water if it was contaminated by pesticides or herbicides or anything like that. So that pretty much does it. And I'm not gonna, of course, drink the water that comes out after this filter, but uh, after this, it goes into a set of reverse osmosis, which starts off with a one micron filter and then goes to another carbon block filter then the reverse osmosis membrane, which is, a, I think it's a 75 gallon per day film tech. And after that, it goes through a, a carbon polishing filter. After that, it goes through an alkaline filter to try to bring the pH back up. And then the final one is an ultraviolet C germicidal filter uh, just to inactivate viruses. Seems a little bit overkill, but the truth of the matter is uh, when you're dealing with shallow water, it's possible that you can get intestinal viruses. They survive water quite well, uh, especially if you have neighboring septic systems. So I wouldn't really want to drink. I mean, you know, reverse osmosis should be enough to block out viruses theoretically, but it gives you one last la layer of protection against something along those lines. And uh, I use that water for drinking, for cooking, for pets, and uh, it filters out salt and it filters out bacteria so many things that you might be concerned. I think heavy metals, um, radionuclides, stuff like that. So the reverse osmosis is not its not terribly expensive. I think it's $150 for an under sink system that comes with a faucet and a tank. So it's not too bad. And if you buy the filters in bulk, 
These filters are, I think, about $4.50. I buy six at a time. These are about $2 a piece. And uh, the one microns, I think I might have paid $2 a piece for those as well. When it comes time to changing filters, uh, this type of a housing is very helpful because you can choose bypass. If you set it to bypass, you can close this down and relieve the pressure. And when you unscrew this, there's not you can actually continue to use your water system while you're replacing filters if you really want to by using bypass. So once you turn it to bypass, you can unscrew this and it's not connected. If you have it set to off, I still get pressure coming in backwards through this thing for some reason. I think it only, it only blocks from this direction when it's set to off. But this is a great housing. I like the fact that it's got a, a clear container and I like the fact that it's got a bypass on it. I think it was about $40 on Amazon. And again, I used these uh, truck bite fittings so I have the ability to move it around. And it's attached to the wall with anchors and a steel uh, bracket which you can get on Amazon for like four bucks. This one I got um, sort of for free as a um, as a bonus feature from a Craigslist deal. It's just a plain Jane. It does have a, uh, you can actually, there's a button hiding underneath there that you can use to relieve the pressure. You can, if you have air bubbles in there, um, or if you need to change the filter, you can relieve some of the pressure before you take this thing off using that. I haven't mounted that bracket yet. It's nice to have the bracket because when it comes time to change the filter, you do have to kind of yank on this thing with your filter wrench and uh, it kind of holds it tight otherwise you get the whole thing moving around so it'll be it'll be good to get a uh, bracket in there